Habits are a big part of who we are. What we do habitually makes up much of what we do entirely. In fact, it's estimated that up to 70% of our waking behavior is made up of habitual behavior. People are highly variable. And if you can't form one habit easily, it doesn't mean that you can't form other habits easily. So what I'd like to do is to take the scientific literature of how the nervous system learns and engages in neuroplasticity and apply that to habit formation, habit maintenance, and if so desired, how to break particular habits. With each repetition of a habit, Small changes occur in the cognitive and neural mechanisms associated with procedural memory. So I just want to talk for a second about what procedural memory is. In the neuroscience of memory, we distinguish between what's called episodic memory and procedural memory. Episodic memory is a recall of a particular set of events that happened, whereas procedural memory is holding in mind the specific sequence of things that need to happen in order for a particular outcome to occur. It's very clear that for anyone trying to adopt new habits, getting into the mindset of procedural memory is very useful for overcoming that barrier that we call limbic friction. How do you do that? Well, a simple visualization exercise, or it doesn't even have to be done eyes closed. You know, oftentimes we hear visualization exercise, you think about sitting in the lotus position, eyes closed, and you know, trying really hard to visualize something. It doesn't need to be anything like that. It can simply be if you are deciding to adopt a new habit, to just think about the very specific sequence of steps that's required to execute that habit. Let's say I want to get into the habit of making myself or someone else in my household a cup of espresso every morning. I would actually think through each of those steps, walk into the kitchen, turn on the espresso machine, draw the espresso, walking through each of those steps from start to finish. And it turns out just that simple mental exercise done once can shift people toward a much higher likelihood of performing that habit regularly, not just the first time, but as they continue out into the days and weeks that follow. So that's remarkable to me. And the literature is really robust. Just one mental exercise of thinking through what are the sequence of steps required in order to perform this habit from start to finish can shift the likelihood of being able to perform that habit from unlikely or moderately likely to very likely over time. So now I'd like to discuss a second and what I think is perhaps the most powerful tool for being able to acquire and stick to new habits. The tool that I'm referring to is something called task bracketing. And the neural circuits associated with task bracketing are basically the neural circuits that are going to allow you to learn any new type of habit or break any habit that you'd like to break. We have in our brain a set of neural circuits that fall under the umbrella term of the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia are involved in action execution, meaning doing certain things, and action suppression, not doing certain things. In the experimental realm, these are referred to as go, meaning do, or no go, don't do certain things. And some of us fall more into the category of we find it very easy to do certain things, but harder to not do other things. Some people have a lot of no-go type circuits that are very robust and they have a lot of behavioral constraint, but they have a harder time getting into action. And some people have a perfect balance of both, but I've never met one of those people. Task bracketing involves a particular set of neural circuits within the basal ganglia. We have particular circuits in our brain that are devoted to framing the events that happen just before and as we initiate a habit and just after and as we terminate a habit. In other words, it acts as a sort of marker for the habit execution, but not the execution of the habit per se. Now, this is very important because task bracketing is what underlies whether or not a habit will be context dependent or not, whether or not it will be strong and likely to occur even if we didn't get a good night's sleep the night before, even if we're feeling distracted, even if we are not feeling like doing something emotionally, or if we are you know, completely overwhelmed by other events. If the neural circuits for task bracketing are deeply embedded in us, meaning they are very robust around a particular habit, well, then it's likely that we're going to go out for that zone two cardio no matter what, that we're going to brush our teeth no matter what. In fact, brushing our teeth is a pretty good example because for most people, even if you got a terrible night's sleep, even if everything in your life is going wrong, chances are that you're going to still carry out the behavior of brushing your teeth in the morning. I would hope so, actually but you are probably less likely to perform particular habits that are 
not what you deem as necessary. But if you think about it, brushing your teeth, exercise, eating particular foods, maybe engaging socially in particular ways, you are the one that places any kind of value assessment on which ones are essential and which ones are negotiable. So task bracketing sets a a neural imprint, a kind of a fingerprint in your brain of this thing has to happen at this particular time of day, so much so that it's reflexive. Mindset slash neural circuit set of doing things in a particular sequence, which allows that limbic friction to come down and increases the likelihood that we're going to perform that thing. So that regardless of what it is you're trying to learn, there's a much higher probability that you're going to do that thing. And when I say learn, meaning let's say you're trying to acquire a habit that for you is really challenging. Maybe it's um, that you're going to write for an hour a day on a book project that you've been thinking about, or you're going to work on mathematics, or you're going to do any sort of thing that for you, there's a lot of limbic friction. While it is important to think about the sequence of events that would be required in order to engage in that behavior, there is a way also that you can orient your nervous system toward this tax bracketing process so that your nervous system is shifted or oriented towards the execution of a given habit. Your nervous system tends to generate particular kinds of behaviors based not on time, but on our state, meaning what level of activation is taking place in our brain and body, how much focus we happen to have, how fatigued we are, how energized we are. So while schedules are important, It's not the specific time of day per se that's going to allow you to get into a habit and form that habit and consolidate that habit. Rather, it's the state that your brain and body are in that's important to anchor yourself to. If you are considering adopting a new habit or if you are trying to break a habit, it's very useful to think not just about the procedural aspects of what you're going to do, but also think about the events that precede and follow that particular habit and the execution or at least the effort to execute that habit. What you're doing is you're casting a kind of a spotlight or around a bin of time or a set of events for which dopamine can be associated. Let's say I were somebody who has a hard time getting in that 30 to 60 minutes of zone two cardiovascular exercise mid-morning. What I should do is positively anticipate the onset and the offset of that session, right? So thinking about leaning into the effort, going out and doing that zone two cardio session, and I should think about how I'm going to feel after. So not just thinking about how great I'm going to feel after, but also thinking about how hard it's going to be at the beginning and then trying to reward myself subjectively for the entire experience. In other words, start rewarding task bracketing in addition to rewarding the execution of the habit itself. 